I move the fire department line item three million seven hundred forty seven thousand and fourteen dollars. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? Oh, hold on, hold on. Please make your presentation. Oh, I was thinking this is this is fantastic. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> You're trying to expedite things this year, so you have nothing to say. Anybody we can move right into questions. Well, I, I, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. And, uh, the deputy and I are very happy to be here. Nice to see you as well. Um, so we are here requesting this budget as presented. Uh, you will notice that it's a five point. I'm going to get it wrong here. Five point six eight uh, percent increase. Um, primarily driven by wages as a result of contractual obligations. There are several line item changes. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, I want to mention that the items that we have in front of us, there are a couple of items that, um, that the town manager and the selectmen are looking at that would be taken out of this budget and paid for with money that's still in this year's budget. Um, one of those items is a $20,000 outboard engine for the Marine One, and the other is, I think, $44,000 to paint the uh, ladder truck. That is a little bit under that, but yes, sir, that's true. We're looking at that right now, um, trying to do that. We have three quotes for the ladder paint job. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we're working on crafting um, the document for the town manager for the outboard motor. Uh, as you'll recall, a year and a half ago, we had to buy one uh, for the port side of Marine One as it failed during a training exercise. Uh, this motor that we're looking to replace is the same age, so we're looking to do that. Right, right. So, having said that, um, having said that, would you like to um, go through your, your uh, budget and explain basically why we have a 5.68 percent increase sure so generally speaking like i said the uh, collective bargaining agreements between the two unions um the the local 2664 uh contract was voted in the affirmative so they received um two pay raises in the subsequent years that followed the additional uh component to the contractual obligations there are so many of the new members we had four new members in the last 12 14 months um They've all come of age, and so after the first year, the step agreements, uh, step raises that go along with the agreement. Um, the fire officers, local 3017 uh, contract was not approved at that time, so the balance is is based on the firefighters at this at this point in time. All right. So the first block that we usually come to is the administrative side. All right. Um, regular wages. There was a wage adjustment as a result of the non-union wage increase granted by the board of selectmen for my salary. Um, holiday pay was an increase as there was no uh, assignment for the <coughs> chief officers. So that's now been assigned as a line item and it's part of the budget. Any questions on those items up top? We the, move down to the... No, I noticed that this, the uh, gasoline and diesel, those sure. numbers are pretty solid, Christy. Those are through the end of September. Okay. okay, that'll get updated as well. Yeah, and you have the, the run rates, right? What we're using as far as uh, it's the, in the, the it's price in, per gallon. Yeah, it's in the book here. Yeah, it's $1.84 for gasoline, if I'm not mistaken, 209 for diesel. Right. Our marine fuel costs a little bit more, as you might imagine. So. Right, right, exactly. It's right, it's right in the book okay. on page 32 for everybody here. Right. Um, okay, anybody have any questions on this part? Tim, let me ask you a question. So with the procedure that you have in mind, we won't ask any questions until he's presented all of it. Is that correct? Uh, well, as I understood it, we were simply going to be making motions for line items only, which is what I did, and uh, the procedure is normal, which is the presentation we want. And, and after that, we'll people can ask. round table discussion okay. and question. Okay. So, you know what, in that case, Chief, just continue on right. throughout the entire budget. Okay, so uh, what I can tell you is above that, Mr. Le uh, Mr. Chair, you'll see a 25.99% increase. It's a, it's a percentage increase is very large, but the monetary increase is, uh, is essentially very small. Um, that was for um, staff development, I believe. Yeah. You see that line item, there was a new um, charge for uh, professional membership for one of our captains. So I believe that was $175. 
uh, you'll see a 14.55% increase for supplies and expenses. As you may recall, a year and a half, two years ago now, uh, I came before the board and I requested a copier. We were able to buy that out of end of year funds and the total for that was about $7,155, uh, if memory serves. The first year of that agreement, we got free toner and the maintenance agreement. Now we have to pay for toner and we also have to pay $216 a year for the maintenance agreement so that they can come in and, and maintain the, the new copier. So that that uh, comes for the subsequent increase. Yes. Uh, we've already addressed gasoline and diesel and I have not requested any new equipment for administration. Continue on? Yes, please. Okay. Ask a question. David, sure. is that, may I ask a question? Well, we just talked about this. We're going to do the questions after he makes his presentation. After. Yes. Okay. So okay. please continue on. So in fire suppression, you'll see that for the regular wages, we see an increase of 5.1%. Uh, this, again, goes with the contractual obligations for the percentage increase for uh, raises, uh, cost of living adjustment. And it also includes the step raises for each of the uh, firefighters that have come to that various step. The other thing that it includes this year, in June, I believe it was early June, we, we completed rescue swimmer and rescue boat operator training. And you know I've sat before you before to discuss the importance of that. Uh, with that, we've got everybody except one firefighter and now, I believe, that is certified as a rescue boat operator and a rescue swimmer. They also, as a result of that, have a 1% uh, stipend in their, in their pay once they receive that, that um, certificate. So that's their incentive. Uh, that adjust, uh, comes for the adjustment there. We're not looking to change any of the OT wages as we feel that that number works for us. Um, OT callback, I do believe we're remaining the same. You'll see an adjustment for the sick leave coverage. Uh, this was, the, the budget was fabricated for us here in June. We, were, we handed it in to Mr. Bulch, and what I did is I looked at where we were in June and where we were headed. Um, it, it appeared to me that we would be passing uh, where we have been in the past and with the contractual obligations, what I did is I took half the, the projected amount of increase and installed that into the budget. So I used the percentage increase plus what I projected us to be under uh, by the end of the year. Right now, we're doing very well in that line item if you look at our financials, um, but we are one injury away and knock wood, I don't wish that on any of us from expending that entire line item. <laughs> Uh, vacation, it, the 5.3 obviously is uh, right in line with the contractual obligations. Right. Fireworks detail is up 6.67%. That's a $500 increase. That's as a result of contractual obligations as well. This is for the fireworks details for the firefighters. Uh, they're on scene to help assist with the crowd control. They're also on scene to conduct any type of fire suppression that might occur as a result of the fireworks. Uh, they're there throughout the evening. Um, the fire prevention officer does the inspections. They assist with that. The fire prevention's line item for fireworks is in his own overtime. Um, under new equipment, you'll see the the percentage increase is 4.58, but the real, the meat of it here is a $24,000 um, line to request funding for cutters and spreaders for engine four. As you know, in 2016, we purchased engine four for the beach, and it does not have hydraulic cutters or spreaders, which are our uh, extrication equipment. And anybody who's dropped off leaves in the last week or so, you've seen them out there cutting up some cars. And we're, we've just had a wonderful class delivered by a natural firefighter um, who came in and talked about this. It's an essential piece of equipment, so I put that into under new equipment. The equipment other, um, that particular line item, um, I'm just gonna have to reference this for a moment here. We made some changes to this, and the increase is a result of uh, the age on our SCBA bottles. So in 2007, we received a grant, an AFG grant, that allowed us to purchase Scott SCBA. Uh, that's our air tanks that you see on the back when we're going into the current buildings. And those bottles are carbon fiber wrapped, and they're required to be hydro tested every five years. This is their 10th year. They're required to be hydroed. We have 84 bottles that need to be hydroed, so the cost is in that. Additionally, we have a machine called a port account which attaches to the front of our face pieces and it, it detects leaks in the mask and yearly we go through a fitting to make sure that the mask seal is appropriate so that we're not ingesting any type of uh, hazardous materials, smoke or chemicals. So we did not have a line item for the port account prior to this. I added that to this line item in particular. Okay. The next line item for replacement equipment includes I'm not mistaken, the $20,000 for the right. Marine One starboard side motor. Mm -hmm. um, we did reduce a couple other items in there. 
uh, all, to, to which uh, SCBA bought a replacement, but that is primarily driven by the Marine One replacement for the starboard side motor. Okay. So going on to fire suppression, I mean fire uh, prevention. prevention. Yeah. Uh, very little in the way, as a matter of fact, no increases. We've gone down on supplies and, and expenses because our fire prevention secretary, Stephanie Welsh, has done a tremendous job researching uh, how to get it. Anybody who's come to the open house knows that we provide rulers, pencils. Uh, they say Hampton Fire Rescue on them. The kids are getting helmets, you know, and they, they leave with a goodie bag. And um, she did a tremendous job of finding a great resource in, in getting these supplies, and we were able to do it and secure it at a much better rate. So I put in there the rate that reflects what we were able to find and project for next year. Thank you. Um, no, no, no equipment that's zero. Uh, training? Training. So medical services falls under training. This is primarily our uh, line item that we use for the physicals for pre-employment. Um, when we hire in, we need to do a full scanning of uh, cardiac, lung function. We do blood work. Uh, drug and alcohol tests, as you might imagine. Additionally, uh, there's a requirement for anybody performing any type of physical training up at the New Hampshire Fire Academy to uh, have a, a signed waiver that the doctor's done a physical on them. So we've built in here two extra physicals for the year so that they're able to go get a physical if anybody's looking to do uh, trench rescue or high angle rescue, rope rescue, that sort of thing. So we've actually partnered with Clear Choice at this time uh, out of Portsmouth. Initially, we were paying fifteen hundred dollars for physicals, and now we're down to seven hundred dollars for a physical. So, uh, primary driver of that, you will see training and recruitment is a big line item jump, sixty percent jump, sixty one percent, and this is driven by something that I've been working on in front of you now for at least two years. Um, several two years ago, I talked about live fire training, and what that meant was that I was putting firefighters into an environment that had actual fire that they would actually have to. Um, extinguish and this goal was to get the entire group one team up to a burn building so that they could train together at, in one sitting this was never placed in a, as a line item this is the line item for that what we're looking to do is do fire training so whether it's the ice rescue training that we have uh, coming up this winter or trench rescue training which has not taken place uh, confined space rescue training which has not taken place in s over a decade um, this will allow the entire team to go together as a group to, to do the training off-site. That's what that line item is for. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, communications. Uh, you'll see that there's a small decrease in the wages line item. We hired a new uh, fire alarm operator within the last 18 months, and the lower salary is reflected there. OT wages have gone up. Uh, they are... Their, their salary is a little bit different the way it works out when they're paid. They're paid on a rotating system, unlike the firefighters, which is averaged out at 42 hours per week. Their salary is paid per pay period that they're working. So they'll have 40 hours plus 8 hours of overtime, and then on one week they will have a 24-hour paycheck. Uh, so their, their overtime works a little differently. And in, in order to get a, a broad-based education across all boards, roll out SOPs, have communications, what we've also implemented, and you'll see the cost in this, is a quarterly meeting with three of the four fire alarm operators coming in off duty, so I'll pay them overtime. Uh, there will be a fourth, the fourth fire alarm operator on duty will be attending the meeting, and I will cover the overtime with firefighter overtime to cover fire alarm. So this will allow quarterly meetings so that we can exchange information in a timely fashion. Radio maintenance is the largest driver there. Uh, there have been some changes along with um, the increased maintenance on our aging radios. <coughs> some of our radios are out of compliance. Um, we're working on replacing all of the Astros, which are radios that were purchased on state funded grant, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, 16 years ago. Um, we function with them now, but they are past their serviceable date, and our, our radio maintenance company, Two Way, it, they can't provide service to them anymore. There's no parts for them or anything like that. They're out of date. Additionally, we've had uh, some issues with paging system. We still use small pagers. They're called Minotaurs. Uh, you've seen us wearing them on our belts probably, and they, they start barking their speakers. 
and they'll they'll call out when there's coverage if there's a fire if there's coverage needed for medical aid or whatever it might be uh they're starting to fail they're an older system as well so we're looking to replace those repair services yep. um you'll see that we have increased that line item under vehicle maintenance by 25 percent the biggest chunk driving that is obviously the $33,000 that we're looking to use to repaint the ladder truck. Uh, if you recall, we had to dead man uh, engine two, the 2001 Smeal, as a result of frame problems. Um, it was a real big problem for us to do that. Uh, we looked at all of our other apparatus. Engine three had some problems that were sanded off and were able to be repainted. We we're also able to do that with the ladder truck. Uh, however, the exterior portion of the ladder truck, the cab and the body, uh, is showing where it's 11 years old and it's starting to bubble paint, especially around the hinges and the windshields. And before it becomes a maintenance nightmare, we're looking to repaint. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Fire right, stations yeah. and buildings. Yep. Uh, electric and heating fuel, you'll see I dropped. And the reason is that when I first sat before you, our, new, our building was new. And we did not have experience in that building to know what it would cost we're projecting only. Uh, based on our three years of experience in the building right now and looking back at what we spent, we feel that these numbers, especially if we're keeping in line with what the utility costs are right now currently, will project out that the cost savings will be reflected here and that's why I subtracted as much as I did. Building maintenance. Building maintenance. So there are, there are two primary drivers to the increase in the building maintenance line item. The first is a repair and service agreement for our heating and cooling system. We're currently using Palmer and Sitka, a local company. Uh, they come in twice a year to perform maintenance on the system, replace all the filters. Uh, they're called on emergencies, and generally it's all under the same umbrella. It's an, a total of $8,000 a year for both buildings. So this is not only headquarters, but also the beach fire station. So in total, it's about $4,000 worth of maintenance each time that they do that. Additionally, you know that we installed two generators. The one up at Winnicunnet Road is a 125 kilowatt generator, uh, Caterpillar, and the one at the beach fire station is a 150 kilowatt generator, Kohler. And both of them need to be run and maintained. And in order to test them, they need to be done under a load bank. In order to do that, the costs were presented to us, and it's going to be the first time that we'll be able to do that. I included that in this line item, as far as this goes. Overall, you see that our uh, total increase, like I said, 5.68. Okay. 